Hello, this is Vern, and if you're 40 or older and are feeling frustrated, burnt out, and a bit hopeless about attracting an amazing man, in today's video, I'm going to reveal why age isn't your problem and how you can hop into the driver's seat of your love life, start thriving with guys, even if you haven't so far. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, or wasting time, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Today I want to start with a poem that was written over a thousand years ago, and it plays hand in hand with the theme of today's video, and it goes something like this. 10,000 flowers in spring, the moon in autumn, a cool breeze in summer, snow in winter. If your mind isn't clouded by unnecessary things, this is the best season of your life. Listen, the promise of this video is I want you to stop feeling overwhelmed, stop feeling confused, stop feeling unnecessarily sad, and falling for a myth that is inaccurate, and really understand what's within your control beyond the age on your driver's license, beyond the number of wrinkles in your face, that can give you the sense of control about what you can do about your love life, and that can offer so many possibilities beyond the ones that you've experienced right now, and also can create a new vision and a new goal for you so that you can actually get the love that you've been craving for for years. I have good and bad news. Giving up isn't an option for most of us. And let me share why. Listen, today in the most advanced countries, the life expectancy of a woman is about 85 years of age. And this number is only going to continue increasing with time. Thankfully, and that means that if you choose to give up right now and you're 55, let's say, you're saying, I'm choosing for the next 30 years of my life at least to not have the companion that I'm seeking, a best friend to travel with, someone who can see me at my best and worst, making love to someone I feel really compelled to connect with, a spiritual partner. If those are not things that you see yourself for the next 30 years or 40 if you're younger doing without, then figuring out how you can get what you want, irrespective of the challenges that you see right now, is the thing to do. And what I want to share about age is that there's a lot more that meets the eye. To The elephant in the room is this. Age is a factor, and if I, I would be a scum artist if I were to say that age doesn't matter in any way. It matters, but it doesn't matter as heavily as you think it does. And there's things that start going away with age that don't have to that if you were to bring them back, you'd have so many more opportunities in front of you. And I want to give you an analogy to, to help you go deeper. And let's say you go to India and you want to have a filet mignon for dinner. You'll probably, be, you'll, you'll probably find out that it's not possible because you can't eat cows in India. And if you ask, why can I eat cows in India? Well, because they're sacred. Now, you can leave it at that, which is the equivalent of saying, age is the thing that's making this hard, or you can go deeper and ask, why would cows be sacred in India? Well, because people from India get butter and milk, and they get fuel, and they get transportation, and they get so many different benefits from not killing cows. So at maybe 1400 years ago, somebody said, you know what, let's make cows sacred, and they did. So if you think about the application of this into your daily life, what we want to talk about is in addition to age, which is a number in your driver's license and something that you have very little control over, what are some of the things that start fading away with age that you can focus on bringing back so that you're not just competing for some prize that is far out of your control, but that you know that you have something that younger women don't have, which is not just beauty, but beauty and wisdom. There's something I want to talk about, which is uh, sometimes overlooked in today's day and age uh, where people feel like they just deserve everything <laughs> and not have to work for it. And that is that extraordinary love requires extraordinary skills. This is the first time in human history that we as human beings, both men and women, have the option and have the possibility of experiencing the depth of love that is in our periphery, meaning you can get something that is spiritual in nature, emotional in nature, physical in nature, that has many different qualities that before weren't really even considered for marriage. But because we want so much more, we need more skills. I'm going to talk about seven skills and virtues that you need to bring back if you don't want to tie your arms around your back and get a blindfold and then attempt to climb Everest, which is what you're trying to do if you're just focusing on moving forward without stepping into these virtues. But 
two of the biggest ones that you will have to, in the context of growing, put in place are organic connections with men and online connections with men. If you don't have those skills, if you don't develop those skills, then you can go through the seven virtues I'm talking about right now and you still won't get what you want. Now, I don't have enough time to go into depth about the online and offline connections, which really means creating a conscious dating strategy, but I have something for you. If you want to learn how you can create a conscious dating strategy based on what I recommend, then all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this. Enter your name and email and you can start watching my free training right away. Now, the first virtue that goes away with age but doesn't have to is radiance. And what does radiance mean? Radiance means your ability to shine, your capacity to be full of life, your capacity to express joy and passion and excitement and aliveness. So if you think about this, if you think about someone who goes through pain and maybe some breakups and maybe some betrayals, then something that starts fading away in the context of that and many other life problems is your capacity to shine. So if you want to start increasing your ability to have the best man out of what's available right now, something that you can do is focus on, irrespective of men, figuring out ways to shine more brightly and more powerfully. Sources of inspiration, sources of joy, sources of passion, sources that make you, without having to work so hard, express more about your greatness that's inside of you, sometimes hidden, sometimes covered in snow and dust, to come out and play more frequently. Second virtue that starts going away with age but doesn't have to is openness. And think about that. Openness is in friendliness, approachability. Now, if you're someone who's not being approached by men constantly, then two things are happening. You're not putting yourself in environments where that's possible, but also the way you're showing up without you recognizing it your level of friendliness, your level of eye contact, your body language isn't shouting, I'm open and approachable, but more likely shouting, I'm insecure, or I'm not sure about this, or I maybe even punch you, metaphorically speaking, in the nuts if you try to have a conversation with me. So one of the things that you can start doing if you've lost some of that openness is to do things in life that allow you to be more playful, naturally. Do things in life that allow you to be more friendly, but also when you go out and about, I need you to notice your body language. And I want you to ask yourself this question. If I were a man sitting on the other side of this restaurant, if I were a guy walking side by side with me on the street, would I feel the openness necessary to have a conversation with me or would I feel this woman is not interested? And if the answer is, I would feel that woman is not interested, then I need you to adjust your physiology accordingly so that you can create more options. Number three, sensuality. And why does it start going away with age? Because the more pain we go into and the more stuck we get into our routines and the more comfortable we get, the less likely it is that we're seeking sources of pleasure. And sensuality has to do with how you interpret stimuli around you and how consciously you connect with things that make you feel through your senses. And I'm not just talking sexual pleasure, although that's part of it. Are you connecting with yourself sexually in a way that allows you to shine when you're not doing that? But are you connecting to a sense of touch, smell? Are you witnessing things that are beautiful in nature through your eyes that, again, create that sense of inspiration and that sense of lightness and that sense of that there's an in intangible feeling that you get when you connect with someone who is constantly connecting to sources of pleasure. And it's much more inviting energy. It's an energy that feels more open. It's an energy that feels more alive. It's an energy that feels more mysterious. It's an energy that feels more engaging. And if you want to start shining more powerfully, if you want to start standing out, it doesn't take that much. That's my main message to you. Most human beings are not doing what I'm asking you to do right now. Most women who are going through life and have had a few painful experiences with men have lost touch with the conscious effort of creating what I'm sharing with you right now. So if you start doing this, you will start shining more powerfully because so many people are not really focused on this. They're focused on a false problem, which is why am I not getting what I want? And why, is, why can't I change my age? Why can't I make it the way it was 20 years ago when I had so many more options? And I'm sharing with you right now, you have more options than you realize, but you have to be willing to express more than you're expressing right now. The next one is judgment versus curiosity. Again, when you go through more pain in life, if you kiss a few more frogs, what happens is you start 
naturally judging experiences in a way that tries to protect you. But sometimes the protection goes a little too deep. Sometimes you connect with someone who might be a great partner, but they show a sign that is similar to somebody else you connected with. And instead of saying, maybe this is not the same thing as the other person, you just put the same blanket over that person and you say, you know what? I'm going to close my doors on this human being. And if you judge too harshly, then you might leaving on the table lots of potential connections that could be great partners. But this happens in two ways. Maybe you judge him too quickly because he didn't show up with the exact features that you were looking for. Maybe what happens is you have a false expectation of the level of connection and magic that needs to take place at the beginning. And if it doesn't happen that way, you say, well, it's never going to happen. So you almost run to the exit too quickly instead of giving the guy a chance to start with time showing up in a way where he can give you more than he's originally showing up with. Now, I'm not saying connect with someone and start a relationship with someone you don't feel passionate about, but I'm also not saying you need to feel that passion from the get-go. Uh, next one is hope versus cynicism. Many women who, when they age, they instead of being hopeful, they start becoming cynical. And cynicism is equivalent to baggage. So think about it. You connect with someone who has this predominant viewpoint of life, like it's not going to work, it's really hard, uh, this guy is going to be blank, and that blank is not something positive. Uh, he's just trying to do this to me instead of he might really genuinely be hungry to, to get to know me. If, if your sense of cynicism is high and it's something you've started losing through time, then you're you're fighting against yourself to create what you want. So how do you reconnect with a sense of hope when you're starting to be cynical? Is You start seeking out stories of possibility. You recognize a fact, something that's true today that wasn't true many years ago, which is there's more women right now, let's say in their 50s, who are appreciated and loved by men of all ages, not just men in their 50s and 60s, but men in the, in the 30s and 40s. Now, I'm not saying that you should, say, date somebody 20 years younger, but what I'm saying is that this is the first time in human history where that phenomenon of younger men also being interested in women at this scale is taking place. So think about it. It's not all women that this is happening to, but those who have the capacity to create this connection are showing up in ways that perhaps you could show up if you opened up the virtues that I'm sharing with you right now. The next one is routine versus growth. Something that goes away with age is you get more stiff not just in your physical body, but stiff in your ability or willingness to try new things, go to new places, have new experiences. And if you started losing that, and you have a routine where you connect with the same group of friends, girlfriends, and they're either married or single, but also having a really difficult time with men, and you don't go outside of your bubble, then you're making it so hard to find new connections because the guy you want might be at the coffee shop that you're not going to, or on that event that you're saying, oh, it's too crowded, I, I choose not to go to. You need to be able to get uncomfortable in your ability to express yourself. Because the last thing you want to do is be the radiant goddess who spends her afternoons day in and day out watching Netflix. Nothing wrong against that. But it's not going to put you in contact with men who would be really willing, if you are more open, more friendly, more playful, more sensual, to engage in conversation with you, to connect, to play, to go out and date you. And the next one, the last one I'll share right now today is the capacity to bounce back. And that's if you look at a baby, a baby falls, they just maybe made a robber, so the baby will just bounce back. And the more you go through life, the harder it is sometimes to bounce back. So here's two things and two advantages you have over women who are younger. You've experienced more pain, but you have more resilience. You have more wisdom. And if you choose to right now, based on everything you've faced, you have a greater capacity for courage. You have to step into it. Courage is a muscle. If you step into that, you have a huge advantage over human beings who don't know as much as you do, who haven't gone through as much, as many challenges as you've gone through, and who haven't succeeded at solving them the way you have. So I want you to start focusing on your potential, your capacity, your abilities, what you stand to offer right now. If you put yourself out there more, and if you start developing ways, irrespective of men, to step into the virtues that I shared with you today, and I'll briefly say them again. Radiance, openness, sensuality, curiosity versus judgment, hope versus cynicism, uh, growth versus routine, and bouncing back with joy and a possibility for more options. Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful to you. And if it is, get the first link in the description of this video so you can start watching my free training. If you enjoy the video, click like or thumbs up. Share with me in a comment what's the biggest takeaway 
you're taking from this video and maybe something you're willing to do that maybe before you weren't. And last but not least, if you want my help, hand holding and guidance, because this is harder sometimes in actualizing than just understanding, then second link on the description of this video will allow you to connect with me and if we're a fit, I might be able to help you get this result in a fraction of the time. Thank you so much and as always I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.